Well, we've been asked by a student to review the formulas for the final exam. And I can do pretty much 98% of the mathematics for this exam in a short tutorial. First, we start at the course using the distance formula. Distance is velocity times time. And we use that to measure the speed of sound. And we also used it in sonar experiments where you send waves down to the bottom of a lake and they reflect back. Be careful with some of these problems where you send a wave and the wave reflects off a barrier and comes back, then you have to consider the round trip and you actually have then double the distance. You know this formula already if you're going 50 miles per hour, for example, for three hours and three times 50 is 150 miles, uh, the distance from Asheville to Winston-Salem. And here we have frequency and period if the period is a half a second, then a half goes into one two times, and you're doing it two times a second, two hertz. These are related very simply. You simply flip the one to get the other. When you're dealing with milliseconds, I recommend using this variant where you have a thousand here and the T is in milliseconds. So if you have two milliseconds for your period, two goes into a thousand. Five hundred times you have five hundred hertz and you don't have to worry about using this formula with decimals and moving decimal places in various places. So this is a recommendation to use those formulas. The wave relation is this formula here that we memorize, but notice how it's related to one that you already know. If the distance is one wavelength, well, that takes a period to do that. One period is the time it takes to do a thing once. So that's one of the cycles. So you can replace the distance with the wavelength. Wavelength is a length. This is a distance length. And this is a time. You put the time period in there. And then use the formula that capital T is 1 over F to get this. And then this is equivalent to the product of the wavelength times the frequency is the velocity. I am deriving this formula for you here mathematically, but you need not memorize the derivation. Just simply memorize what we've used in class, and you're all set. For the beats, you here have two sine waves close in pitch, and the sine waves will be perceived as the average tone pulsating at the beat frequency. You get the average tone, the tone by the average of the two frequencies, and you get the pulsation frequency by the difference. Just simply subtract the smaller one from the bigger one. We had a question with bats using this nice formula up here where we're solving for the frequency of the bat, the echolocation frequency where the bat is sending out a high-pitched signal and it bounces off a moth and comes back. And we said for a good bounce, take the wavelength to be one-tenth of the inner size. And then we plugged it in here, used the speed of sound, and found the frequency to be about 100,000 hertz or 100 kilohertz. Know how to use your ratios. There's a variety of problems using mathematical manipulations with the ratios. Always think of the octave first. Octave is 2 to 1. You go up an octave, you double the frequency. If you go down an octave, you take 1 half. Here is the ratio for a fifth. If you go up a fifth, it's 3 halves of what you from what you started with. Basically, you multiply 3 halves times whatever you start with. And if you want to go down a fifth, you multiply by 2 thirds. Kind of use common sense. If you have a fifth and you want to go up or down or have a pipe length that's going to be larger or smaller, remember larger pipes going to sound lower in pitch and vice versa. And then with common sense, you kind of know if the answer is going to be larger or smaller than the starting value and then apply the appropriate multiplication here. And I always divide by the denominator first when I'm multiplying by a ratio because it makes the number get smaller and then I can multiply a smaller number times the three. So if I had, for example, 120 times three halves, I would divide by two first to get a 60 and then I would triple the six to get 18 and stack the zero on there to the right and have 180. When you deal with strings and open pipes, you have a nice formula. The fundamental is 2L. The length of the pipe is L or the length of the string is L. And then if you want to go with the other harmonics, the frequency form is very easy. It's simply n times the first one. So if you want the 10th case, it's 10 times the first one. For the wavelength, it's just the opposite. You divide by 10 instead of multiplying. The wavelengths get smaller and smaller. Notice that the product of the wavelength times the frequency always comes out to be the same speed, the speed of the wave inside the pipe or along the string. 
In this case, the ends would cancel, and you would have 2L times F1. For a closed pipe, you have the same idea, but two differences. One, you replace the 2 with the 4 for the fundamental, and then you kill the even harmonics. You only have odd harmonics for the closed pipe. So here, I've emphasized that by choosing M instead of N, and I let represent a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And a special case, it's the odd numbers only, 1, 3, 5, and that's how I remember this more easily. If you look at a combination problem, we had a problem toward the end of our course where we're reviewing several formulas. The so-called A problem where you have three steps. You have a ratio problem first. I give you something like 440 hertz and say go a fourth lower. Then you have to remember fourth is four to three, and then you take three fourths and get 330 hertz. Then I say stick the pipe out in the snow, where the snowman is going to play it. So the speed of sound is 330 meters per second. Then you have to solve for the wavelength. You get the wavelength is one meter. And then use the uh, pipe, the pipe physics, uh, where the one meter is 2L. So therefore L is 50 centimeters. So that's a question that involves three formulas or using three things and um, that's a good review for for you I, I i'd give you a very quick summary of that but you should check the power notes and take your time to go through that kind of a calculation for bounce modulation or ring modulation you input two sine waves um, we consider one to be the carrier one to be the modulator and you get the sum and the difference of the two sine waves frequencies and that sounds very crazy or weird that's an inharmonic sound typically and for, let's see, our record player formula, the LPs go with 33 and a third rotations per minute, and we approximate that as 30 RPMs to make estimates on, say, how thick the uh, band is on a record, for example. And here I will simply move this uh, 30 RPMs down in a different format here, where you put the rotations, write it out, and put per, remember, this is per, and draw a line for per, per minute. And then here, you simply want to do a problem where it says five minutes, five minutes times, uh, well, five times the 30 is 150 rotations. And this kind of is friendly when you write it this way. Mathematically, it suggests what to do. For a cassette tape, for example, if you have a cassette, it goes at one and seven eighths inches per second, but we round it off to two to give estimates. And so you have two inches per second. Notice I did the same kind of thing here with the line. And if you have it something that goes three minutes, then three minutes is a time. Since I have something per time, I multiply by the time. And here I get a little bit confused possibly because I see seconds and minutes. I can't uh, mix apples and oranges. So here's a nice little trick, which I learned in chemistry many years ago. You multiply by unity, by one. This doesn't change anything because there's 60 seconds in a minute. That, that's an equality if I wrote that out. So if I take that ratio like that, I get one. And that's, there's nothing that's going to change this. And here, what I'm doing is I am uh, canceling. I am canceling the, uh, the minutes here so that the minutes cancel out and the seconds will cancel out, and I'm left with then the inches. So two times three is six, six times six is 36, six to zero on the end there. If you look at feet, you can do the same trick. You have 360 inches and you wanna make it feet. So you don't wanna change anything. One foot equals 12 inches. So this ratio is one, that's unity. And I put it in this fashion because I want the inches to cancel, say. So inches will cancel. I have one numerator, one denominator case. That's what I want. So that's why I put the inches here. Feet has to go up here. And then 12 into 36, three times, the zero hangs around 30 feet. No Ohm's law and no your power law. This is your Ohm's law where you have volts, you have the current in amps and the resistance in ohms. And then the power gives you the watts where this is the amps and this is your volts. For electrical costs, 10 cents per kilowatt hour is what you've been using. This is a very, very nice uh, way of doing it. If you look at this, you really have the answer. It says 10 cents per kilowatt hour is equivalent to one cent per 100 watt hour since a kilo is a thousand and a tenth of that would be 100. And let's do a problem. If you have 1800 watts given as a blow dryer for your hair for 20 minutes, you have to get the watt hours. What it's telling you what to do. It says multiply the time with the watts. Well, this would be a third of an hour. So a third times 1800 is 600. And since it's one cent per 
100 watt hours, I'm finished. So that's going to be six cents. So this is your guide. This is actually telling you how to do the problem if you look deeply into what it's telling you to do. Here, finally, you have applying percent as interest. If you have 6% interest on 100 hours, you get $106 back, your money plus the interest. 10% uh, gives you 110, 50% gives you 150. There was a problem toward the end of our course where we said go up a fifth. If you go up a fifth, that's a three halves ratio. That means 1.5, which means 100 hours becomes $150. That's a 50% increase when you go up a fifth. All right, I think we got it here. Good luck studying for the exam.